This video is going to examine why the same gene, same designer argument is not valid. Before I begin, I would like to say, however, that it would be a valid alternative if it was only the similarities which we were comparing. That being said, it's the similarities, the differences, and the pattern which emerges when one compares them that is actually being compared. Now this pattern is exactly what um, negates and refutes the idea of same gene, same designer, as I'll demonstrate. It's also worth noting that the same reason that their argument is debunked is also the very reason why 16S ribosomal typing, paternity testing, and DNA testing are all valid. They all work on the same principle, which would not exist if this argument was valid. So there are several genes in our body which are extremely well conserved. That means that they haven't changed much over our evolutionary history. Now, what makes a gene highly conserved is the fact that any slight structural change in that gene will be lethal to the organism with very few exceptions. As such, the mutations are highly discouraged and it provides a good, a good marker of descent. Cytochrome C, an important carrier in oxidative phosphorylation, is an example of such a gene. And there are only special types of muta mutations which can occur, and as I said before, they serve as excellent markers of descent. Now, let's pretend that these sequences right here, the AAAAA and so on, are DNA sequences in the cytochrome C sequence of whatever organism. Up at the top is where it starts, and as you can see, it, it descends down to two offspring or down to four offspring. And this doesn't even have to be within a family. This could be, the top could be reptiles, and the bottom could be birds and mammals, and so on and so forth. Again, I can't stress to you exactly how important that it is that you understand the concept behind this, and you, and you see exactly how you can pick any sequence on there and pick exactly where it goes. Okay, so assuming that you understand that, let's move on and, and take a look at this diagram. It's the same principle again, only it's slightly sli switched up, whereas the second to last letter and the middle letter have changed in each of them. This is a little bit more realistic because it doesn't always go in order or anything like that. And again, you can still see that the pattern is clearly evident. Now, a lot like a dictionary or a phone book, if you were to be given a sequence, you could predict and, and pinpoint exactly where that would fit on the tree. For example, if you were given the sequence GAAGT, where would you put it? Think about it for a second. Now if you chose correctly, you'll see that it goes over to the left. If you don't understand why it goes there, you really need to pause the video, rewind it, and at, at least just take a look at this image until you understand why this is the most logical place to put it. And in fact, the only logical place to put it. But I have to ask you, how did you know exactly where to put it? There are quite a few places on the tree that you could have chosen, yet you all chose the same exact one. Why is that? It has nothing to do with the similarities, it's all with the differences. So let's actually tie this all together and go back to the very first example. Um, in this I'm substituting, instead of arbitrary um, familial descendants, I'm substituting it down into reptiles giving rise to birds and mammals and so on and so forth. So if the same creator, same genes argument was true, we wouldn't expect to find any differences in these, in which case the tree would look like this. The only other possible alternative is that if everything was created in present form and there was never any intermingling, any changes would be random, and the tree would look utterly nonsensical, such as this one. That being said, it's, it's not the case. The tree doesn't look like that at all. It looks like this one, which is only explainable by common descent. Now, stop and take a look at it. Do you understand why these two trees are different? and why one is what it would look like if we were created in present form, and why this second one right now is what would look like and what the universe in reality does look like, and it's only explainable once again by common descent. Now if by now it's, it's still not clear to you and it's still not sinking in why the same designer, same genes argument is, is not valid, just rewind it a little bit, watch it, and, and really stop and pause on these images and compare them. Because when you fully understand it, it's amazingly evident and there's no possible alternative. Also interesting is that this is how 16S ribosomal typing works. Remember how I spoke with you earlier about cytochrome C being highly conserved? Well, 16S ribosomal typing is, is the same situation in the sense of the, the ribosomal subunits are also very, very highly conserved and any changes are often very, very negative with very, very, very few exceptions. Those exceptions serve as powerful markers of descent. Now, 
I personally use 16S typing in the clinic. If I have a patient that presents with an, an idiopathic oral infection, then I don't know what the cause is. Something is hurting this person. It's an infection, and I can't figure it out. I've tried to isolate the organism or the pathogen in, in question numerous times. I simply can't do it. So what do I do? I send a sample of the bacteria or whatever off to the lab. Now what they will do is they will take a DNA sample of it, and they'll look at the 16S ribosomal region, and they will compare it to a, a known list of things, not for a match, but to see where it fits on the evolutionary tree. Now, this is the same exact principle as me asking you, where does this sequence fit? Now, if the, the genome, and if, if common descent was not true, and if the, the organisms, if, if all organisms on Earth followed this pattern, which was what it would look like if everything was created in present form, you wouldn't be able to match it. Try and find where this sequence belongs in here. You simply can't do it because the pattern doesn't exist and it's nonsensical. That being said, in reality, you can find out exactly where it exists because the pattern is such that you can pinpoint the exact location on the evolutionary tree of where the organism in question belongs. And by doing that, I can identify exactly what pathogen is causing this infection in this person, and I can figure out exactly what to prescribe to treat it and take care of it. Now, this is only possible if evolution is true, and the phylogenetic trees line up and follow this pattern. And once again, only on a familial basis, this is exactly how paternity testing and DNA matches go, which is, you know, enough to send somebody to death row. So it, it's very powerful evidence, it has a very low rate of error, and again, this is common descent, that is, the only possible explanation. So if you're actually interested in further evidence about this subject, take a look at this image that I made a couple years back. It shows it unanimously throughout the in entire animal kingdom, and it shows just the depth and the complexity that, that's found in these conserved patterns. And once again, if you don't understand exactly how this is only explainable by common descent, go back through it one more time. Um, I'm sorry, this is the best I can do. I, I made visual aids. It doesn't get much more clear-cut than this, and, and I thank you for your time, and let me know if you guys have any other questions, but hopefully this will put this myth to rest finally.